Our boat is a 1996 Catalina 34 Mark II. Now this boat has two 4D batteries. That's, that's the total battery capacity that the boat comes with. These are used as starting batteries for the engine. They're used as house batteries. It's basically all the electrical capacity that the boat has comes out of these batteries. These batteries are 190 amp hours each and realistically we can't expect to draw probably more than about um, I'm guessing somewhere around 80 amp hours per battery uh, because they naturally don't want to you know you don't want to take the battery below probably 55 percent and the batteries instead of holding 190 amp hours they really hold somewhere closer to about 180 175 so you really have about 80 amps available to you on these batteries. One of the first things I did to try and reduce our uh, battery consumption was to replace all of our lights with LEDs. We also uh, picked up a cooler which is a little more efficient. We keep it in the cockpit as you can see. Sure. And generally tried to reduce yeah, our overall should, uh, uh, consumption of power. Reducing our power consumption only only goes so far. Uh, as an example, our fridge freezer in the galley actually draws up to five amps when it's running, so there's not a lot we can do. We did uh, go ahead and decide to pick up some additional batteries, and the first one was this Jackery power station. It is only 300 watts, but it does help tremendously. I turn the display here. So it's pulling 51 watts, share. Not bad, not bad. 51 watts, and uh, here's how it changes. Here's off, low, medium, and high. As the cost of uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries continue to drop, we picked up, uh, as an example, a 100 amp hour battery and a charger, of course, to keep it charged. This gave us more than enough power for our day-to-day -day needs. So just to be safe, we bought seven additional batteries. At this point, I think it's important to note that the, um, the batteries that I'm adding are kind of an interim fix. We've got a couple of older 4Ds that when they are no longer of any value, you know, they lose, lose their ability to keep a charge. Uh, we'll replace them with probably a smaller AGM battery and these uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries will become the house banks. As you can see, we have a total of uh, right around 750 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries. These are spread around the boat, as you can see by the uh, highlighted uh, pink or red areas. And basically what they do is they allow us to use either the AC charger, the engine, or the uh, solar charging. And again, this is just an interim fix until such time as the uh, lead acids finally give up the ghost. So, my first four uh, Power Queen batteries has arrived today. Uh, maybe doing a few more of them as time goes by. First thing I'm doing is charging them up. Uh, lithium, iron, lithium iron phosphate. Uh, the beauty of these is that they have a 100 amp continuous discharge, which means I can use them as a uh, alternative power source with some inverters I have. Now. Okay, so what we have here is we're trying out the inverter, uh, this is what we're going to be using, uh, not only in the house, but on the boat as well. So this inverter is going to run, it's 1500 watts and pure sign. What we're doing is we're testing it with the uh, refrigerator to make sure it works. And what we do is for power outages, we have a couple of refrigerators we plan on running. And we have four batteries. Um, in the winter time, these four batteries will allow the uh, both refrigerators to keep functioning for 
probably one to one and a half days, which is typically what it takes to get the power back on. Here we are. So let's find out if this works. We'll plug this in first. And what we're doing here is we're basically going to see... Here we go. How much power you got? Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Let's see what happens when I push and hold. Yeah, 500 to start. And it's running actually when it's less than 140 watts. This inverter, because of its size, is so quiet it doesn't even have to run a fan. Well, I just knocked out some uh, couple of battery boxes. Needed custom shapes to fit where I'm where I'm putting them in the boat. So, yeah, I just uh, I had some scrap lumber sitting around, just a few bucks worth. They had some uh, battery boxes you can get. Um, but they were the wrong shape, wrong size, uh, dimensionally. So these will fit the two batteries plus some uh, area inside for padding and cooling. So this will be 400 amp hours of lithium. So here are the boxes I just built. Put some handles on here. Again, I'm using scrap. So I had some paracord and some PVC. And boxes are pretty sturdy. Nothing to worry about here. And I will go ahead and pad them. Interesting thing here on this, uh, on the batteries themselves. So I charged them and left them for six months just, uh, just to see what would happen at the end of six months. And they, they each read exactly 13.31 volts. Now I charged them a little while ago and 13.39, this should be slightly higher, 40, <laughs> this is the, uh, the sequence in which they were charged, which is intriguing. Ah, 38, that should be 39, okay. This was the last one, 43, 42. Okay, so they're dropping back down, and in another day or thereabouts, we should see them come back to exactly 13.31, which is their resting state. Um, it's amazing. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I got some old, old padding. This is like uh, mouse pads and whatnot that uh, we've done away with. And these mouse pads will become the padding down here, and it'll also separate the batteries. So let's get busy on that. What we've got here are the two battery boxes. Hope that's something you guys can see. Anyway, these are the two battery boxes. And uh, as you can see, I've actually put uh, them in parallel, They're wired in parallel. And the batteries, uh, after six months, they read about 13.31. And if we take a quick look at the uh, state here, parallel, 13.3, oops, 13.37. <laughs> there we go. And this one should be really close. Let's try that again the right way. 13.38 and or 37. Yep, so these are really close, uh, within a hundredth of a volt. And what we'll do is we'll use these. Um, they've been padded so that they, they have uh, foam pads underneath and on all sides and in between, uh, leaving enough room so that they can breathe because I don't want them to get overly hot. Not that we have a problem with that. In the Pacific Northwest, um, what we're looking at basically is... Uh, probably an average water temperature of around 50 degrees and at a 50 degree water temperature we're really looking at uh, and these are next to the hull so we're never getting above probably 60 or 70 degrees 65 maybe even on a hot summer day and I thought I'd show you the uh, this is the uh, plug that we put in we, we not only charge these 
but we also discharge these through a cigarette lighter. And we charge via a uh, SAE plug, and we also have the ability of charging uh, directly through a, uh, basically a male cigarette lighter socket. And what I've done, all of these have uh, <clears throat> 30 amp fuses. Now, obviously the BMS on each of these batteries uh, will hold, uh, it, it'll discharge at 100 amps. So parallel, this is 200 amps worth of discharge. However, uh, the reason we bottleneck it to 30 amps is that we don't ever use high amperage. Like we don't have large inverters. So nothing we do is ever above probably 300 watts. So we're, we're pretty clean with how we use the power. Also, when we're charging this, we charge it at 20 amps. So primarily it's either off of a, we'll use our solar panels. We've got a couple of solar panels. Uh, if we're not using a solar panel, which charges closer to 10 amps than what we end up doing, they each get 10 amps. Uh, what we'll end up doing is charging through a, uh, uh, shore power and the shore power charger charges at 20 amps. So that's a it's a real clean and simple way to work this. We don't have direct easy access to these batteries. Once we place them, they're down in in a set you know underneath the settee, and so they're not really accessible. But it's really nice to be able to have them uh, charge and discharge while protected. So we brought up some batteries and water and whatnot. We get these all situated, plugged in and connected to everything. Uh, they're going under the settees. Here, of course, Sherry is replacing a picture. A picture. You want to do the picture after the battery? After, sure. yeah, okay. I want everything. I'll go place the battery in here. Uh, we're taking this pot home, or do we? We don't know yet, do we? Let me set it. Let me set it right. Whoops, right here. Um, I'm gonna pull this apart and get the battery ready to go in. <sighs> Nothing to her, huh? <laughs> and I gotta put the ropes behind it next. all these. This is the hard part. And do this as well. There we go. Put the fuse cover on. Snaps in place. Okay. And then we'll put on, I guess we'll start with, uh, Actually, we're going to start with the red one this time. Here we go. Just need to grab the rope, I guess. Yeah, let me grab that, that rope. Ah. All right, we just throw this back here. I wonder if we could fit another one, or is it, would that just be too much? Yeah, that'd be too much. Let's just leave it with one. This one is not going uphill, that's for sure. Okay, we're in business. This should do her. thing we need to do is confirm that we have power, right, from both of these. Okay, so I think that's it. This is the new one. Oh, good. 
Good. Yeah. Are you just going to leave that in, or? No, if you leave it in, don't they drain the power? They, they do drain some power doing that. Hmm. There's one other thing I wouldn't mind trying. What's that? Um, this one. <laughs> I haven't actually tried this one. So, I'm thinking this is all set up for a reason. Let's see what happens here. Okay. All right, you ready? All right. Uh, put cushions. In cushions. Yeah, that's the hard part. <laughs> okay. Are they behind? Yeah, let me start with this. We set this in, but these have to go in that weird way. Then, oh, here it is. That one. So this goes like this. And good luck with that one. That one's usually. Have these meet and then push each other in. There. Beautiful. Then, we start these. I'm guessing this goes here. Just a wild guess. Mm -hmm. Now, how about we put water in there? Um, well, you know how hard it is to unsnap these cushions. Not too bad. I'm fine with putting water in there if should, you'd yeah. like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's put water back. Well, that's right, because it's got some. So, we're out of here. Uh, everything's put back as it belongs. One of our new batteries is actually 256 watt hours, and it weighs only five pounds. We also have a couple of different uh, MPPT charge controllers that we use with each of our, well, we have a couple of solar panels and they're each putting in close to 10 amps. So this is the solar input and it traces down here and runs back behind this table and into our batteries, which are gonna be hard to see. And then top side, We keep our uh, solar panel right there. By the way, it's uh, charging our batteries right now with 10 amps. Which 10 amps, by the way, is uh, absolutely everything that's needed <clears throat> to give us refrigeration and lights and power and you name it. Wow, this thing charged itself up almost entirely, babe. Already? Yep. Well, that's fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this little uh, little charger does the job. <laughs>